Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. You know what I found out that when it comes to things about God, how many of you can, can attest that God has ways to reveal things to you. Maybe it's different than how he reveals it to the person next to you, but it doesn't stop God from showing you what he needs to show you. We're talking about the maker of all of us, creator of the heavens and the earth, everything that's contained within. It's no trouble for him to, to fine-tune the message in a way what Connie needs to hear is different than what Sharon needs to hear because he knows where we're at. And he knows how to help our faith. And, you know, we... I hate to say this, but Christianity has really put God in this like little box. Everybody got to come to God this way in this experience. And, and I'm like, but Jesus doesn't fit in the box. In fact, he steps out of the box to meet all these different guys in different ways to show them that it's really him and help convince them so that they would be convinced of what? Of the resurrection. The very thing that is the pivot of all our faith. If Christ has not resurrected, as we're going to see next week, Paul says we are just most to be pitied. We'd be foolish for coming out here and sitting in rubber-made chairs on the beach just listening to some guy preach from some book if Jesus hadn't risen. But guess what? He did rise. And so we're not foolish for listening to this because this builds our faith up and helps us to know God met every one of those guys right where they were at and God will meet each one of us right where we're at. He has ways. You know, sometimes we're like, Lord, I'm having a bad day. I just, man, the bills are piling up. Everything's going bad. I don't know how we're going to make it. The ties were horrible. <laughs> uh, this is my day. <laughs> Sorry. Lord, you know, we're just a small group. You know, we're not, you, you know, it's, when you're the pastor to the church that has little and you're just a little group. Sometimes I can go, man, 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 poor me. And then I, I always console myself because when I came to Christ, I got saved in this Calvary Chapel movement. And Pastor Chuck Smith, the guy who founded it, one day I was at the table with John Higgins and him, and, and John was his youth leader in the early days, and he's the one that mentored me. And Chuck and John were talking, and the... the some, somewhere in the conversation, a young guy in, in the group, uh, Greg Lore, I think it was, said, so what would be your ideal church, Chuck? Your dream church? And he said, a hundred or so people, a uh, couple hundred people maybe, uh, uh, on a beach in Hawaii. <laughs> and so when I get discouraged, I'm like, I have Chuck Smith's <laughs> dream church. <laughs> but in having the dream church on a beach in Hawaii, I got stretched. Because I had to find out that God doesn't really need a building to meet people. My whole Christian experience has always been in a building, you know, a church building. And there was a thing called a thermostat on the wall <laughs> that whether you realize it or not, you know, I mean, I, they're finicky and need a little temperamental work. But, but, you know, I was one of those guys that learned how they worked and fixed the thing and you know, that, that I, I guess I had faith for. But, but when you come to a beach and you're told it's going to be monsoon storm or there's going to be, um, you know, today what was it supposed to be? Thunderstorms. And you're going, great, service is going to be interesting with thunderstorms. Then we got these little tents. You know, and no one will come. And that means tides will really stink again, Lord. <laughs> How am I going to make it? Me, me, me. And God goes, watch this. You know, the Lord, every time the Lord meets us where we're at. How many can give an amen to this? That the Lord, you're going, but Lord, I don't know. I don't, I'm going down. And he goes, here. And he does something. He, he brings one person who you've never met, or, or even better than that, you, this mysterious envelope shows up. You know, tucked under the mat of your front door or on your windshield or, you know, like you don't even know where it came from or when they put it there. And you open it up and there's the, there's the money you needed for the bills. And you're just like, or even weirder than that, 
someone paid your bills and you didn't even know about it. You know, I've heard testimonies where people have shared, Christians have shared with me, I, I was so stressing about my bills, Pastor, you don't understand. It was freaking me out. It was a big time problem. And then I go to, to the place, to Helco, and say, I'm, I, you know, the electric company, and say, I'm not going to be able to pay. Is there, can I pay you a portion? Just keep my lights. And they go, oh, your bill was paid in full. What are you talking about? And the person, who? Doesn't say who, just says it's paid. You're paid. Have a nice day. This Christian called me up freaking out. Somebody paid my electric bill and the, and the company won't tell me who. <laughs> I was saying the Bible says don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So what do you care who paid it? <laughs> I mean, I was like, wake, snap out of it. Your bill was paid. That's the good part. Just live with it, you know. They were so free. They were like, I got to find out who it is. I got to pay them back. I'm like, no. I think they probably didn't want you to know good you know maybe they're trying to get some treasure in heaven you know the lord is so cool about meeting us where we're at now this this whole thing is leading up to paul saying jesus appeared to all these guys first next week we're going to go over and last of all who does he appear to paul says to him and we're going to go to the book of acts and i'll show you the appearance of Jesus to Paul. Well, let's look at this next week. If you have time, would you do me a favor and just read over in the book of Acts, the, the chapter, chapter 9. That's the conversion of Saul to Paul. And I'll tell you a little bit more details about it next week as we're going to see how Paul is going to now take this from Christ appearing to all those guys down to Christ appearing to himself. It's going to be about it's going to turn personal from the, from the guy who's telling the story. And this is where, the, well, there's some really neat insights I hope to share with you next week about how the Lord does that in our lives. He can be appearing to all different people in different diverse ways, but then he makes it personal. And he appears to you. Just like he did to Daniel's co-worker, Johnny, when his son drowned last week on Saturday. It's all good for Daniel to be going to church and good for Daniel, the pastor's son, to be, you know, into Jesus. But Johnny wasn't, you know, he knew about it. He'd been to church but wasn't really doing it. Boy, did the prayer request come flying when his son drowned. Little Josiah. And there was fervent prayer. And, you know, I got to hear the, the, the word... He, he, his thank you, he actually, Johnny called my son and said, tell your church thank you so much. God is such an awesome God. God heard our prayers. My son is, is making a full recovery. And, and it was a little, one of those little videos, you know, where you can see the little guy has got long locks and he's running around and so cute. And you're just like, Lord, you are so cool to hear our prayer for that little one. It makes it personal when the Lord reaches and touches people around us in the community. And you know, if you don't mind, Angie, can I tell them what you told me during the... This is my Hanai mom, Angie. She went up to her, where she grew up, up north, and uh, she just stopped, what did you say, by the fruit stand? By the fruit stand? Yeah, the way to Polu Valley. She stopped, and there was a lady that looked at her, and she, I know you. And she said, you're, you're what was your mom's name? Mar you're Margaret's daughter, Angeline. And your mother, listen to this, your, her mom, back in the day, this lady and her sisters, the dad didn't go to church, but he dropped the kids off to the church. And her mother saw these three little darling kids were at church, and they had that night um, uh, the Christmas story, and then they had a like a secret Santa gift for the kids, you know, but the, the, the secret Santas with the parents were supposed to bring something that got given to the kids, right? Except these three kids' dad had dropped the kids and jetted. And her mom saw that the kids got nothing. So she went and got three dolls the next day and went and hiked all the way up the, into the hills to their house and brought them these dolls. And this lady at the fruit stand went, your mom 
It's the only one. She, she, we never had give, been given a gift like this. We never, ever got one again. And your mom changed our lives. Angie said she was bawling, you know, like, you, you don't know how God can provide just to, through the simple act of charity. And you guys, all of us, are to be the witnesses. By the word witness means showing of Jesus. Not a talking, a showing. Just the act of love, of charity, giving that. Those dolls touch this lady's life even to this day. I mean, this was just this week, right? When you went up. This is not like a long. Just this week you went up and she's Thursday. And she, and she went, oh, you're her daughter. All these years later, you think, the Lord is cool. You don't know how God might use you just to touch one person's life this week, but, but please, if he puts it on your heart, don't, don't be like some of those Jews that were real stiff-necked and, oh, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to be like that. Just do it. See what God will use you to do. You might touch someone's life and impact them in a way you might not even realize. I heard a, I heard a testimony this week where, where this fellow was in prison a black fella that had gone through the foster system, got himself into trouble. He, and, you know, everyone's saying, you're going to wind up in the wrong gang, you're going to wind up in the wrong side of the tracks. And he said, and sure enough, he did, and he wound up being incarcerated. And he, and he as his testimony went on, he said there was a, some fellow that came to the jail, and he w walked in, and he, s he looked at him, and he said, you know what? And he called him Mr. So-and-so instead of, like, he showed him some respect, and he said to, to this inmate, Mr. So-and-so, I believe in you. I believe you, you have, you, you can do it. He said no one had ever said that to him. No one had ever said, I believe in you. You can do it. He said it changed his whole course of his life, that one word. Everyone before that said, you're a loser, you're going to fail, you're a failure. You know, his whole life, that's all he had heard. And that one word, and you might be the one God uses to give that kind of word to someone in despair. It wound up making his prison sentence cut short because he went on to have good behavior. He got out. He went on to, to do well in this, what we call in the business world. You know, it was a great testimony. I thought, man, sometimes our, our witness, our showing of Jesus is as simple as giving a kind word. You know, the proverb says, the right word at the right time. Just that, that, that perfect word at the right time. It says it's like giving them an apple of gold in a setting of silver. It's precious. You're that, you could be the mouthpiece for the Lord this week if you let him. Because I can't do all the mouthpiecing for God. I mean, yeah, you, and you all think that all I do is talk. Man, he talks all oh, so he, His sermons are so long. He talks forever. He's like that but big mouth for Jesus. My wife laughs because she knows how I am at home the rest of the week. I'm like, I conserve. <laughs> I talk about Jesus when the opportunity comes. That's when I get excited because the most exciting thing to me is telling you about him. The rest of the time, I really haven't found anything that exciting to talk about. I go, we go on drives for whole hands and just drive and drive for hours. And like, I'm totally chill. That's good. You know, and somebody's like, so, Jen, how is it? He must talk your ear off and do it. And she just smiles. You don't know. Because you only see me up here. But I do know that it's not the volume or the length of the message. Sometimes it's just one little word. You can do it. That your mom just said, Santa slipped up, he, but he didn't forget you here. Yeah. And she brought the three dolls. That's not a long message, but it was a company with an act of charity that showed the love of God to those children. And that woman hasn't forgotten it. You think, wow. Guys, may you be used this week. You, it might be just a send some groceries to somebody on the other side of our island that lost their house or maybe you clean out your closet and get some clothing together and you think let's send over you know my wife just someone contacted her do, do you know anyone that's going that way we want to send some stuff over there 
you know, or she, and later she wrote back, yeah, we got some stuff given. We want to send some, you know, and a lady drove up to my house yesterday. I hadn't met her, Emily. She just came and we loaded up her, she was from Hilo, or from P P Pahoa, and she was from there, and she's like, I don't know exactly where to get it. We just said, bring it and give it to whoever needs it. You know, the Lord abundantly blessed us. Let's bless. Let's pass that forward. And you might this week just, God might put it on your heart to do that for one person. You know what my word to you today would be? Do it. You don't know how it's going to affect that person's life for eternity. Let's be his hands, his feet. Let's be, you know, Jesus to the ones around us through acts of charity. And let's keep praying for Josiah. Let's keep praying for our fellow brothers and sisters up in Hulualoa, Living Hope, Brent Williams, the pastor, and, and their flock this week. I don't say, let's just pray for them once here. Let's pray for them all week. Let the, let the other brothers and sisters know our church prays for your church, that you would, that you would grow and succeed and touch people too. Because we can't touch everyone here. I mean, we could have a few more. We got empty chairs. Bring some friends. Next week, we'll pack it out. I'll tell you about Paul. We'll have some fun. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege to share your scripture. Lord, the things that testify about your son, what he did for us, how he touched the lives of men. Lord, how that testimony was passed on and passed on and on and on all the way to us. Over 2,000 years later, Lord, you, you're bringing these words to our ears to help our faith. Lord, may these, these seeds what have been planted and the ones that have been watered just grow to a full harvest, Lord, that they would just make such a great crop in our lives, Lord, that we would become so strong in our faith. We just ask you would grow us, grow our brothers and sisters up there in Hulualoa serving you and all the other churches. In fact, we pray for every church round about our islands that right now you would make a, a move, a mighty move of your spirit and, and you would just pour out your grace, your charity in all of us that we would be bright lights to those around us right now. Pray especially for those in Pahoa, the ones that have lost their houses and lost their lands and everything they own burnt up from the lava. Lord, we pray you would give them great comfort. Comfort their hearts right now. Lord, and supply their needs. You said ask each day our daily bread. We ask you for our daily bread, but also for theirs. We ask it together in Jesus' name as we close it. In Christ's name we pray. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me listening to a closing song? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.